you say, now I really want to take a look at looking at a whole bunch of functions and finding their domains. That is, finding all the allowable inputs for x values that would then produce some sort of allowable output. OK, so let's just start right in and take a look at f of x. That just means this is a function that depends upon x. And here's the recipe. Here's the little machine. x squared minus x plus 1. OK, there we go. Now the question is, what are the allowable x values? Those x values that I could actually put in here where this would actually produce a legal, honest to goodness, real number. Answer? Well, let's see. What x values or what restrictions would I have to place on it? If I have any x value at all, any number at all, think of your favorite number or even your least favorite number, you can always take that number and you can square it. That gives you another number. Fine. Then you can always subtract the original number away from that and add 1. So in fact, the domain of this is everything. All the allowable x's would be the reals. So the domain here, domain, would be all the real numbers. Again, I'm using this little notation for, for reals. Because any x value is allowable. So that wasn't too bad. How about this one? This next function I'll call g of x. Remember, that's just the name for it. I could have called it Sam of x or Mary of x. Doesn't make a difference. I'm calling it g. 3 minus 4x, and I take the square root of the whole show. The whole show, the whole show. I don't know if you can see that. Everything. OK. Well, what's the domain of this function? What are the allowable x values that I could plug in? Well, let's think about it for a second. I'm taking the positive square root of this quantity. So the only allowable x's are those x's for which this entire thing under the radical is going to be positive. So what I have to actually do is, is actually write down an inequality and then solve an inequality. So the ability to solve inequalities now comes in handy here. So let's see. I'd want 3 minus 4x to be greater than or equal to 0. And now I want to solve that. So let's see. How, how would I solve that? Well, uh, one thing I could do is bring the, the uh, 3 over to the other side. It would become a negative 3. So I, I subtract 3 from both sides. And I would have a minus 4x greater than or equal to minus 3. Even though I'm subtracting 3 from both sides, the sign doesn't flip in this case, because I'm just adding or subtracting something from both sides. It doesn't change the inequality. OK, but now I want to divide both sides by negative 4. And so what do I see? I see that x, I'll have x on this side, and here I'll have minus 3 fourths. And what's the sign? What's the sign? Uh, to put here. Well, you may be tempted just to keep the sign. But that is a classic mistake. That's right, it's classic mistake number seven. Number seven. It's the multiplying the inequality mistake. It's a classic mistake. It definitely makes my top 10 list. You have to remember that when you multiply an inequality or divide an inequality by a negative sign, that inequality symbol flips over. So in fact, here, it should look like this. Classic mistake. And I hope that, that you will never do it. So the domain for this function, g, would be all the values for x that are less than or equal to minus 3 fourths. And if you look back on that, you see that, oh, wait, hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on a second. I made a little typo here. I made a little typo here, a little typo. Maybe you saw it, maybe you saw it. But look, if I'm dividing both sides by, by negative, I look at this major typo. In fact, I wouldn't call that a little typo. I call that, if I were grading this, I would be very harsh on myself. This should be a minus sign here. Oh. And that's a minus sign that a minus and a minus makes this a plus. Sorry about that. I have to be honest, I didn't catch that one myself. Our lovely princess crew director did. OK, anyway, it's a positive 3 fourths. So, so x has to be less than or equal to positive 3 fourths because I have to divide both sides by negative 4. So not only the right hand side or left hand side, but the right hand side. OK, so that means that the only allowable values that I could put in for x in this function g are any value for x that's less than or equal to 3 fourths. Look what happens if I put in a value bigger than 3 fourths. For example, let's say I put in the value 1, which is bigger than 3 fourths. If I put in the value 1 for x, look what happens. I see 3 minus 4, which is negative 1. And I'm taking the square root of negative 1. No! That's not going to happen, because that would not give me a real number. That's an imaginary number. So in fact, the only values for x which give me real numbers are the values of x that are less than or equal to positive 3 fourths. So the domain of this, x less than or equal to 3 fourths. 